Welcome back fellow creators. In this tutorial, we are diving into the world of Adobe Media Encoder. Adobe Media Encoder is a powerful tool that helps us optimize and export our media files. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just getting started, this tutorial is going to walk you through the main features of Adobe Media Encoder and highlight some commonly used functions. All right, let's get started. So as you can see, when you open Adobe Media Encoder, you get a very similar looking screen. Adobe Media Encoder is a part of the Adobe Creative Cloud, and this is specifically designed for encoding and exporting media files. It allows you to efficiently convert and optimize your files for various formats, devices, and platforms. The best part is you can queue multiple jobs at the same time, freeing up your editing software and other tasks. You may use Adobe Media Encoder in such apps as Adobe Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects. So once you open Adobe Media Encoder, you're gonna again notice this really common, clean, intuitive Adobe interface. To begin, we can import our files by simply dragging and dropping them into the program, and it supports a wide variety of file formats, videos, audios, and even image sequences. So this is a great way to again convert and uh, change the file format if you need to. So to add items, again, we can drag. We can also do a quick double click and go to our videos and pull them in. So here I have a couple of video files as well as a audio file. And you can see the type of files you can bring in Media Encoder is absolutely almost endless. It's, it's pretty intense how much you can pull in. So I'm gonna go ahead and open those. And what's gonna do is going to give me a drop down for every single element. So one of the most convenient features in Adobe Media Encoder is it ex its extensive library of encoding presets. These presets can define uh, custom settings for various platforms such as YouTube or Vimeo or if you have specific devices like smartphones or tablets. Again, simply choose the appropriate preset and Adobe Media Encoder will do the rest. So at the top here, we can look through our media browser if we did wanna load files that way. Here at the bottom, you'll notice we have presets everything from uh, different broadcast presets for TV or different camera type presets. We have the mobile device presets. So again, if you're exporting for a mobile device and you can go down here and see quite a bit of presets, even down toward the social media category, which you'll probably most use uh, these days. And you can see all the different YouTube, uh, Twitter and Facebook type videos. Now, if you don't wanna apply a custom preset, that's perfectly fine what we can do is customize our settings. So for instance, for our MP3 setting, we can click this little drop down, and you'll notice we have a bunch of different styles of audio. So I can change this to waveform audio, a WAV file, or a .aiff file if I wish. And then just like in Premiere and After Effects, anytime you see this blue text, you can actually click on it. And by doing that, that's going to open up a whole new window to allow you to go in and change some of the settings. So if you wanted to lower our sample rate or change this to mono uh, from stereo, we can down res this information. We can even go and add different effects and duration changes and play with some loudness normalizations again in this audio. We can add comments for our viewers and you know you can go and access those presets as you wish. You can even click on the name and rename it to anything you wish. We can go to the metadata tab and enter any type of metadata that we wish to be on that file at a click of a button. Again, really easy. If you don't want a file to be in here, you simply can hit the delete key and again, it will remove it from its track. So another great part is we have the ability with video to change video up. So here we have MP4 files, but if we wanted to make them MPEG, or if we wanted to go down and create a QuickTime movie of them, we could do that rather quickly. We can also access our presets right here where it says match source. Now match source will essentially take all the information that's currently in your file and match that and then just output it to your selected file type. When you're dealing with kind of codecs and resolution, you gotta understand that you can go down, but like making something higher res most likely is just not going to work. So, you know, just be mindful of that. If you're working with low res footage, this will not enhance, at least right now, enhance that footage. So we can go down here and you, we can choose all sorts of 
again, YouTube or Facebook quality or mobile device quality things. If we click on the title here, we can rename this. So we can call this render one and hit save. And that will just output it to that specific folder. And we can again, go through and adjust as we see fit. We can even set it to turn off our computer when we're done. I can hold shift, I can select multiple files, I can delete multiple files. And I have the ability to kind of, again, go back and duplicate or add. So if I want to export this for multiple platforms, I can just hit the duplicate button and then change my bitrate to, let's just say Facebook for that time. This is a really helpful tool, as you can see, because it's really user intuitive. Now, what I can also do is change the type of renderer. So if you have a GPU and you want to accelerate this, so if you have a graphics card that is built for kind of video production, you can use that. If you're noticing that your, you know, your media encoder is running pretty slow, you can even change it back to the software only kind of renderer. And that sometimes can speed things up depending on your device. So to actually output these, you simply, it's, you hit the play button. So if I had 20 files in here and I hit play, it would start at the top and work its way down. But when I hit play, you can see it renders rather quickly. And in my folder, as you see, whoop, pull that over, we now have that lovely rendered folder. So if you're looking at ways to uh, take down file size, to, to compress your file, maybe you have a gig file that you wanna just play on social media and you don't need it to be a gig, we can use Media Encoder to do that. So presets are fantastic, but again, Adobe Media Encoder offers a plethora of options, including those video audio codecs. You have the ability to change the resolution play with the frame rates. Let's go ahead and import another video and just kind of look at what you can do in there. So if I go ahead and click that, I can kind of come down here and look at all of the different video options. So I can either match the source or if I wanna make this, I don't know, 640 by 480 for whatever reason, I can go, in this case it would be 360, but I can go ahead and change that with the click of a button. I can also change different encodings and audios, uh, publish settings. You can publish this to a Creative Cloud folder. You can publish this straight to Behance. You can make sure your video goes straight to Facebook or a specific FTP, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube, you name it, you can auto sign in on this. So again, this level of controls allows you to fine tune your output to meet specific elements. Now, another powerful tool is the watch folder function. Now, you may notice there's this little thing that says auto encode watch folders. Uh, by specifying a watch folder on your computer, Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder can automatically monitor it for new files and apply predefined coding settings to that. Again, this is cr incredibly useful when you start creating watch folders here by hitting add to just drop your files in as you continue to work so you can work with that. In conclusion, this is a quick tour of Adobe Media Encoder. We covered the main features and highlighted some commonly used functions, including importing files, using presets, customizing your settings, queuing up files, and batch processing. Again, leveraging using that watch folder, as well as being able to change almost to any file type you can think of. Remember, Adobe Media Encoder is a valuable companion for your editing software, and it allows you to optimize and export your media files. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and it empowers you to make the most out of your Adobe Media Encoder creative workflow. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to comment. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your fellow creators. Until next time, happy encoding.